Verse 12, For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law, and as many as have sinned in or under law shall be judged by law. Here Paul explains the equality of the judgment, both with respect to the Gentiles and the Jews. Without law, that is a written law, for none are without law, as the apostle immediately afterwards shows. The Gentiles had not received the written law. They had, however, sinned, and they shall perish, that is to say, be condemned without that law. The Jews had received the written law, yet had also sinned. They will be judged, that is to say, condemned by that law. For in the next verse, Paul declares that only the doers of the law shall be justified, and consequently, as condemnation stands opposed to justification, they who are not doers of it will be condemned. In one word, the divine justice will only regard the sins of men, and wherever these sins are found, it will condemn the sinner." The Gentiles shall perish without law. They will perish, though they are not to be judged by the written law. It is alleged by some that although the apostle's language shows that all the Gentiles are guilty before God, yet it does not imply that they will be condemned, for that they may be guilty, yet be saved by mercy through Jesus Christ. But the language of the apostle entirely precludes the possibility of such a supposition. It is not said that they who have have sinned without law are guilty without law, but that they shall perish without law. The language then does not merely assert their guilt, but clearly asserts their condemnation. They shall perish. No criticism can make this expression consistent with the salvation of the Gentiles who know not God. They will be condemned by the work of the law written in their hearts. Many are inclined to think that the condemnation of the heathen is peculiarly hard, but it is equally just and not more severe than the punishment of those who have sinned against revelation. They will not be judged by the light which they had not, nor punished so severely as they who resisted that light. Verse 13, For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. This verse, with the two following, forms a parenthesis between the 12th and 16th, explanatory of the two propositions contained in the 12th. Some also include the 11th and 12th in the parentheses. If this mode of punctuation were adopted, the 13th, 14th, and 15th verses would be a parenthesis with in a parenthesis, but for this there is no occasion, as the 11th and 12th verses cannot connect with the 10th, and also with the 16th, for not the hearers of the law. Against what the apostle had just said concerning the equality of the judgment, two objections might be urged, the one in favor of the Gentiles, the other in favor of the Jews. The first is that since God has not given his law to the Gentiles, there can be no place for their condemnation. For how can they be condemned as transgressors if they have not received a law? The second objection, which is contrary to the first, supposes that the Jews ought to be more leniently treated, since God, who has given them his law, has by doing so declared in their favor and made them his people. He will therefore, without doubt, have a regard for them, which he has not for the others whom he has abandoned. The apostle obviates both these objections in this and the two following verses, and thus defends his position respecting the equality of the judgment. As for the last of them, which he answers first in this 13th verse, he says that it is not sufficient for justification before God to have received the law and simply to be hearers of it, but that it must be observed and reduced to practice. This is an incontestable truth, for the law has not been given as a matter of curiosity or contemplation as a philosophical science, but to be obeyed. And the greatest outrage against the law and the legislator is to hear it and not to take heed to practice it.